welcome to a lesson on perimeter. In this lesson, we will determine the perimeter of various polygons. Perimeter is a one-dimensional measurement that represents the distance around a closed geometric figure or shape. To find the perimeter, we add the lengths of each side of the shape. If there are units, we include units in the final result. Units will always be of singular dimension, for example, feet, inches, yards, centimeters, and so on. Perimeter is never in square units or cubic units. For the first example, we're asked to determine the perimeter of the given rectangle. Let's begin by labeling the lengths of all four sides. In a rectangle, opposite sides have the same length, and therefore the length of this side is eight centimeters. The same length as the opposite side. The length of this side is three centimeters. The same length as the opposite side. Now that we have the lengths of all four sides, we determine the perimeter by adding these four lengths. So the perimeter is equal to, let's start with this side here, so eight centimeters. Going around clockwise, we have plus three centimeters, plus eight centimeters, plus three centimeters. Well, because eight plus three plus eight plus three equals 22, the perimeter is equal to 22 centimeters. Notice for this example, I did leave the units on each length just to emphasize their perimeter is in centimeters. But often we'll leave the units off when determining the sum and then put the units in the final answer. Now some polygons do have formulas that can be used to determine their perimeter. In fact, you may have discovered one in an earlier activity. Two common formulas given to determine the perimeter of a rectangle are shown below, where P is the perimeter and one formula is P equals 2L plus 2W where L is the length and W is the width of the rectangle. An equivalent formula is P equals 2B plus 2H, where B is the base and H is the height of the rectangle. So for this example, let's also find the perimeter using a formula. Let's use the formula P equals 2L plus 2W. This formula should make sense because notice how to determine the perimeter, we summed two eighths and summed two threes. Typically L is the length of the longer side of the rectangle, but it really doesn't matter. So let's let L equal eight centimeters and W equal three centimeters. So we'd have P equals two times eight centimeters plus two times three centimeters. Simplifying, we have P equals two times eight centimeters is 16 centimeters plus two times three centimeters is six centimeters. Of course, we get the same perimeter of 22 centimeters. Let's look at some more examples. For the remaining examples, we'll leave the units off until we determine the actual perimeter. Because the polygon has so many sides here, let's mark where we're going to start. So we'll start with this length here of five inches and work our way clockwise. So the perimeter is equal to five plus three plus six plus two plus three plus three. So five plus three is eight, plus six is 14, plus two is 16, plus three is 19, plus three is 22. So the perimeter is 22 inches. For C, notice how we are not given the lengths of all the sides. So we need to begin by determining the length of this side and the length of this side. To determine the length of this side here, we can use the length of this side, which is five meters, the length of this side, which is one meter. This length here must be five meters minus one meter, which equals four meters. And now to determine the length of this side, we can use this length of seven meters and this length of three meters. Length of this side must equal seven meters minus three meters, which equals four meters. Now that we have the lengths of all the sides, we can determine the perimeter. The perimeter is equal to, let's go ahead and start with this side here, and again work our way around the polygon clockwise. So we have seven plus one plus four plus four, plus three plus five meters. Seven plus one plus four plus four equals 16, plus three plus five is equal to 24, their perimeter is 24 meters. 
Let's look at one more example. Joseph does not own a car, so must ride the bus or walk everywhere he goes. On Mondays, he must get to school, to work, and back home again. His route is pictured below. How many miles does Joseph travel on Mondays? Well, looking at the route, from home to school is three miles, and then from school to work is six miles, and then work to home is another six miles. To determine how far Joseph travels on Mondays, we can determine the perimeter of this triangle. The perimeter is equal to three miles plus six miles plus six miles. Well, three plus six plus six is equal to 15. The perimeter is equal to 15 miles. So now we know, so now we know Joseph travels 15 miles on Mondays. I hope you found this helpful.